Welcome to Electra Online. Now let's take a look at a two-tailed test. And why do we need two-tailed tests and why do we use a two-tailed test instead of a one-tailed test? Well, let's take a look at the example because that will probably make it clear. So let's say that the, we make a claim that the average weight of students equals 120 pounds with a, a standard deviation equal to six pounds. And we set up a null hypothesis where we claim that students' average weight is 120 pounds. So if we end up with a sample that is far away from the 120 pounds, we'll probably end up rejecting that null hypothesis and now we'll accept the alternate hypothesis where it says that the student's average weight is not equal to 120 pounds. But notice here that we didn't imply that it was 120 pounds or less than 120 pounds. We just said that the null hypothesis was such that the student's average weight was 120 pounds and the alternate is that it's not 120 pounds. So that means that the average weight could be greater or it could be smaller and in both cases we would reject that null hypothesis. We just need to be far enough away into the critical region at both sides of the distribution of the population. And let's say that we take a level of significance equal to 0.05, which is 5%. And of course, we use the symbol alpha to indicate 5%. We take that 5% and we equally distribute it on both sides. So we put 2.5% on the right side and 2.5% on the left side. And of course, we need to know the Z value, the, uh, Z, uh, the Z number for the boundary on both sides. So what we need to do then is we take our table, we look up 2.5% in the table, and 2.5% would put us right there, which is 1.96. So we read that right off the table. So on the right side, we have z equals 1.96. On the left side, we have z equals negative 1.96. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a sample of students, and let's say we picked a sample of 100 students. Now, 100 students is a big sample. And so it doesn't take much of a difference between the mean of the population and the mean of the sample to indicate that we're in the critical region, therefore we're going to reject the null hypothesis. So here we end up with a standard, with a, with a sample size of 100 and with a mean, an average of the sample of 118.8. Is that enough of a difference between 120 and 118.8 to reject the null hypothesis? It's a big sample size, but also there's not a lot of difference between the mean of the population and the mean of the sample. So let's see where this falls. So first of all, we're going to calculate the test statistic. And so the test statistic is going to be equal to the mean of the sample minus the mean of the population divided by the standard deviation, which itself is divided by the square root of the sample size, which is n. So this becomes equal to 118.8 minus 120 divided by 6 and I'm going to move the square root of n to the right here, the square root of 100. So this is equal to a negative 1.2 divided by 6 times 10 and so negative 1.2 divided by 6 that would be negative 0.2 times 10 which is equal to negative 2. Alright, negative 2. Notice it's further to the left than the z-score on the left side. So since t is equal to negative 2, which is further to the left, that puts t into the critical region, to the left of the boundary, which is at minus 1.96. And so therefore, since we're in the critical region, we are going to reject. Therefore, we're going to reject the null hypothesis with a 5% level of significance. So we're 95% sure we're making the right decision and we're going to claim the alternate hypothesis that student's average weight is not 120 pounds. It's probably closer to the average of the sample that we took and therefore we're going to reject the null hypothesis. Not by a lot, just barely, but enough with a 95% confidence level that we made the right decision and that is how it's done.